Today we're going to be showing how to clean liquid metal and thermal interfaces off of components like CPUs, IHSs, and other components like this one here. As you can see, this one has a little bit of thermal paste that got into the socket, not too much, but we can solve this problem fairly easily, fortunately, and that is done just by... We recently did a video on how liquid metal interacts with different other metals, like nickel-plated copper. This, for example, it's been lapped on one side, sanded down, so you can see that it's copper. And the other side is just nickel plating. And this is common for any integrated heat spreader. Getting liquid metal off of this isn't too hard, but as many of you have asked us in the past, there is definitely some left behind material. And the question is often, how do I get rid of it? So I'll be talking about that today. Then there are just straight copper heat sinks like this, or you could apply the same tricks for cleaning this one to something like your actual heat sinks, a cold plate, a laptop cooler, anything like that. The CPU would be silicon, so you'd be cleaning liquid metal off of silicon, and everything else is going to be some variant of a metal we're looking at today. So this video will help you with removing liquid metal safely from your device so that it doesn't short anything in the future or so that you can reapply liquid metal or some standard thermal paste instead because it is something that moves around, it can cause problems, and sometimes it's not so easy to get rid of. But we talk about this a bit in our liquid metal corrosion test video. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Thermaltake Level 20 VT Micro ATX case. The Level 20 VT takes the high quality Level 20 design and makes it more affordable and shrinks it down to a micro ATX form factor at that. With fully modular paneling, it's possible to rearrange this case into whatever configuration you prefer. For a micro ATX case that can be a discussion piece in a home theater system, click the link in the description below. Let's start with the nickel plated copper IHS because this is the most standard thing you're cleaning off other than silicon itself. You shouldn't really ever have to reapply liquid metal, but if for some reason you do, maybe you switch systems and remove it. Honestly, you can just take something like, uh, we like the blue shop towel because it's a little bit more structurally sound than standard white paper towel from a, a shopping, like any food store. So you take that, put some rubbing alcohol on it, and that'll kill a lot of it immediately. You have to be careful with dropping any liquid metal onto small surface mount devices and potentially causing shorts. Now, sometimes, this doesn't work so well. So for example, if your liquid metal had been sitting there for a lot longer than this solution was, you could move on to something like just a clean Q-tip. And we use these frequently for applying liquid metal. You can see that they have a lot on there. But if you take a clean one and dunk it in rubbing alcohol, that's great for getting some of the uh, more stuck pieces. But if you look at this, you'll see there's still some black marks. and some of that is going to be permanent, but it doesn't impact thermal performance in any meaningful way. We've, we've tested it. We talked about it in the previous video about liquid metal corrosion impact and not really a big concern. So as you see, most of it's gone. We get some of it on the outer edge. You can either wipe it off with a shop towel or get a Q-tip and clean it off with that. You can also buy cleaning kits. So this comes with the Cool Labs solution and it's, it's overkill. You don't need this stuff, but I suppose if you wanted it all in one kit, you could grab it, it's just, it's not necessarily worth it. This is just 70% rubbing alcohol, that's all it is. It's the same thing we just used, except it's pre-applied, so not really anything special. You'll see it still gets pushed around, and that's where Q-tips come in. But otherwise, it should just pick it up and uh, more or less disintegrate a lot of the liquid metal that you see. So we're just gonna push a lot of this over. And then if you wanted to, you could technically reclaim that by siphoning it up how useful it is at that point, I'm not sure. If we were doing testing, we'd just get rid of it and use some new stuff. But uh, also, for working with cracks, if you end up with liquid metal in anything small, like maybe it falls off the IHS and into a small socket or something, you can grab a brush. Hobby brushes work great. These are just cleaning brushes, and these will reach into those uh, sockets and pinholes, and you can hopefully hopefully get some of it out with that because otherwise it will cause an electrical short and cause problems. So that's fairly cleanable. Just a Q-tip with rubbing alcohol on it will do the trick. That'll pick most of this stuff up. You can push a bit harder and just get as much of it as you can just so there's no electrical shorts later and you're good to go. So that's most of it. As you can see, it just picks up like that. There's a bit more we can do here. You get the idea. You just keep working on this until you get all of it. 
and that's that's pretty good. So we're in pretty good shape here. Now there is this black marring left, and there's not a lot you can do about that. It just know that it doesn't really impact normal performance. What you can try to do is you can grab some acetone, which is just if you pick up some nail polish remover at the store, it should have acetone in it. Do not use this on silicon because uh, sometimes nail polish remover has not not friendly chemicals for silicon. So you don't need much of this stuff. It doesn't smell great. Careful when using it, all that stuff. But you can get nail polish remover or acetone and apply it, same shop towel in this case, and it will take some, some pressure. But you can get a bit of the black marring off. So here's after just hitting it a few times with acetone. You can see that we're definitely getting some of that material off. That's uh, what's left over of the gallium, indium, and tin. So that makes it friendly with nickel-plated materials, like nickel-plated copper. But uh, every now and then, you'll get some permanent staining like that. We could keep going here. You could keep applying. You're not going to get all of it. You'll get a lot of it, but it's really not important. Now, the cleaning kits do include sort of uh, sponges or steel wool sometimes. This is something we don't recommend. You're better off just cleaning with rubbing alcohol if you want to get stains as much as you can, acetone. But at the end of the day, you'll have some stains on there and if you start using basically a sanding material, you will strip some of the finish, you'll strip some of the nickel plating, you'll strip if it's on the top side, which obviously we don't have, but if you have names or writing on the top side, it'll strip that off. So we don't recommend this solution because all you're doing is scratching up the surface and yeah, you'll get the liquid metal, but you'll get everything that it's on too and there's no performance hit to having that there. So just, just ignore it. If you get it to this point, you're fine. You don't need to worry about anything else. This, we would consider this clean and then just start reapplying liquid metal. I mean, to the touch, it's completely flat and smooth. So this is staining. And the reason this happens is best described with this thing. So what's happening here is uh, there is a difference in potential between the liquid metal, which is a gallon sand compound, and the surface of the IHS. In this case, it's copper. So there's no nickel plating. And what we're getting is ion migration where the liquid metal as applied to the CPU die, which is under this thing, this sort of leg that sticks up, the liquid metal will slowly have some ion migration into the copper surface, which causes a stain. Functionally, your performance, pretty much the same. You've just plated it and it's still a smooth surface, can't feel any unsmoothness, it's not like it's not level, and it, it, thermally it's fine, performance isn't really any different, we've tested that as well. So if it bothers you, you can try and clean it off, but just the chemical properties of this stuff mean that it's, it's pretty permanently plated at this point. However, we can do a bit of work on it, and if you want more details on some of the chemical processes of, of this stuff, check out our liquid metal corrosion testing video, which is on the channel, or we'll try and link it below. So this is rubbing alcohol, and you'll see that it's not really doing much. We've got some up every time, but not really a good choice for this. So let's move on to some acetone. So with acetone on here, same process. You can just kind of try and rub some off, and you'll get a bit of it, but end of the day, this is pretty permanent. So, and this is where you could, if you wanted to, cause some damage and start scratching the surface. You can use kind of a rougher sponge or steel wool, but it is going to cause damage. That's not worth it because it's just, there's no gain from it for you. So we, we would not recommend taking this approach. Uh, it'll roughen the surface up and yeah, get some of it out, but to what end? So there's no benefit. So that's how you clean that stuff. Let's get a CPU piece of silicon as well, just to show that, that's pretty straightforward. So let's, let's find a CPU we can clean. Uh, so we have a few here. We have, we have quite a few CPU options. I'm just gonna grab, this is all from our fans. Thank you to those of you who sent them. We haven't turned them into art yet. But this is just an AMD Torion CPU. Not something you'd really be putting liquid metal on today, but you could, so let's do that. And then we'll clean it off. All right, so number one thing that happens. If you've seen the, the first time we ever used liquid metal, and also every time Linus uses liquid metal, you'll see that anyone who uses the plunger on these things, and even if you just do the flick of the wrist method, which is what happens here. If you use the plunger, you might end up with a scenario where the liquid metal just sprays everywhere and that kind of sucks. So best way to clean this up, and be, this is the, the most common thing a beginner will run into, uh, is to get hopefully an empty syringe, but you could, hope, you could also reuse the one that you just used. 
and just pull the plunger and siphon it back into the tube. So pretty cool how that works. That's the best way to clean a liquid metal spillage if you spray a lot of it all over the device you're working on. Uh, if, however, you actually just spread it on properly and you now want to clean it afterwards, we can show that as well. So in this setup, presently, we have some liquid metal over here. We need to get that off. Use a Q-tip with rubbing alcohol on it and just go over the area. Hopefully you already pre-coated this with nail polish or something so that you don't have to worry about the liquid metal, but you can also go over the area with a Q-tip and, uh, and just rubbing alcohol, and you'll see a lot of it's picking up right there. So that's pretty clean. There's one more piece of liquid metal over here. I'm just gonna push that out. All right, so here's an example of a liquid metal application where you might wanna remove it. It's a little patchy, it's not perfectly flat, uh, consistency is poor, so this is a good time to remove it and try again if you're applying liquid metal for the first time or something. And for that again, rubbing alcohol, blue shop towel or paper towel, get as much of it as you can without going over the edges and onto the SMDs. You can see that we're not spilling past just the border here because I'm staying right over the middle of the die and that'll get most of it. And then for the rest, you pull out the Q-tip again Wet one side with rubbing alcohol, clean it off, and it will be good to go. Then you just go over the SMDs and make sure there's no liquid metal left on those that could cause any shorting, electrical shorts. Just a couple small flakes here and there, but that's, that's more or less done. And that's how you clean them. So if you've been wondering how to clean liquid metal off of a component once you're done working on it, that's how you do it. Cleaning the IHSs I think is probably the biggest question people have had and the answer to how do I get this off is you can't. You can get a lot of it off, but not all of it. The rest of it stains there. And if you are like neurotic about cleaning it, just try not to be because uh, using stuff like this, you start sanding down the surface. And like I said, it'll get the liquid metal stain off, but it'll also get the metal off. So at that point you'll end up with worse performance because it's not smooth anymore and the most important thing is smooth. So as long as you, you touch the stain and it's smooth, it's not like it's a bump on the surface, leave it alone, reapply your liquid metal, you'll be fine, everything's good to go. Copper will stain naturally because of ion migration from the uh, gallon stand solution into the copper, that's fine. If it needs more liquid metal, just apply more, but it's, it's effectively plated. So it's not causing any damage, it's not corroding it. You might have some pitting depending on the exact solution you're using. Uh, it's certainly something that's been seen before, but that would be different than the stain that I showed you today. So that's it for this one. As always, subscribe for more. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. Go to store.gamersnexus.net if you'd like to pick up one of the mod mats like the one I was working on today. You saw it in all the footage where we were working on the CPU components. It is a, an excellent modding service. You can grab it on our store. And thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.